Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Gillingham. I'm a poultry veterinarian involved in the poultry industry across Canada for over 30 years now. I'm here today because we're looking at a barn setup, and the barn setup is with respect to brooding. Starting these chicks off in the right environment. So today we're going to spend the morning and look at the brooding parameters that are conducive to developing the immune system, get the gastrointestinal system working, but more importantly develop the bird for the future and grow it in this barn through the production cycle. When we work across Canada from Newfoundland to British Columbia and in this province alone, you, you have about 1,100 farmers. And for me, there's 1,100 different ways of growing chicken. That's why the barn dynamics are absolutely critical. And biosecurity has to be practiced at all levels. We build up the wall of protection through vaccination, good nutrition, but we need to also reduce that wave of insult. So we put on our coveralls, we put on our gloves, we put on our head net, we put on our boots, because what is in contact with the environment we need to understand could infect the birds or cause challenges. So biosecurity is critical. When I come into a barn, the really important thing is to look at an integrated approach. You just don't want to inspect. You have to have that auditing kind of attitude. Write down what you do, do what you write down and prove it. We have to evaluate, and I like to use the acronym FLAWS, food, lighting, air, water, space and sanitation, because no barn is the same. Different feed, different lighting, different litter, shavings, chop straw, barley, wheat, long straw. Looking at this, this barn right now, it feels very comfortable at my level. When I look at the parameters here, the first and foremost is the feed. What we like to see is at least 50 to 70% of the brooding space covered with paper. That paper then provides a little bit of insulation from the straw to the chick, but also the medium or the, the foundation for the feed. We want at least 40 to 50 grams of feed dispersed on the paper per chick. These feed, feed pans are in the litter. They have also a spillover, so we have to allocate the feed in the pan, which becomes a satellite feeder, as well as the feed on the paper to get to that 40 to 50 grams per chick. That's critical. Now looking at the quality of the feed, this looks like a crumb, and crumb texture becomes important. So for starting, starting chicks, you want consistency. Uh, science and research has proved that chicks like a size between 2 mm and 3 mm. And these pans are shallow, which is good, but more feed here in the center row would be conducive to possibly more crop fill. When I look at the lighting, the lighting is at least 10 feet above, but the intensity from these LED lights is very bright. It's a new barn, we got some reflection. And when we start chicks, we have to have a bright light, a good intensity. There's a lot of tools that can be used um, in, in the field or investigation of, in evaluating the brooding chamber. A tool that I really like is a CO2 and moisture meter. And what I like to do is put it at an area in the barn. You try to put it in different areas and then you can read the CO2 and then the humidity. So I usually put this out and after 30 seconds read it. Now the CO2 is 568 and we know that humidity in this barn would be low and it's 22 percent. CO2 is perfect so they might apply their misters on in the non-brooding side and try to generate some opportunity for moisture. When those heaters are on, I would like to go down and find out exactly where it's 90 degrees and I would paint every 10 feet when those heaters are on exactly where it was 90 degrees. I would get my spray can and do the same thing when the heaters are off. Now, your brooding chamber is between those two painted lines. Where am I going to put my feed in water? Where are the chicks going to be in their comfort zone between those two lines? 
Now the water lines. They got three rows of water lines, which is fantastic. I like to see the lines flushed a couple of hours before the chicks come. That alleviates some of the air pockets. And then I like to activate all the nipples with a broom so that there's a droplet of water from each nipple. You can run a broom down here, just like this, and you can activate these water lines. That droplet from the nipple has to reflect from the light. Chicks are very curious. At eye level, they will see that glistening drop and run over and start picking at it. You see that droplet which the chick perceives, and it drinks it. Now what's really important is the height of the water line. Those nipples have to be at eye height to the chick. The chicks are hatched in the hatchery. There they have certain temperatures and humidity. Those are conducive for quality chicks. The chicks then are sorted, they're put on a truck, and brought to the barn. The barn somewhat has to mimic the hatchery environment. A chicken is like a cold-blooded animal for the first four to five days. It cannot thermoregulate. The environment, the brooding chamber becomes critical. What we need to do is create that brooding chamber for the health and welfare of the chick. The space is great. This is spot brooding. We have three water lines. We have two feed lines. Excellent capacity here for the birds to maneuver and find a comfort zone for feed and water. Sanitation, wonderful. So barn preparation, we have to remember, we are the mother hen. We have to create that brooding chamber that is conducive with heat, humidity, lighting, etc. for that chick to what? Get to feed and water. Brooding to me is a full-time process. We can't just put the birds down and run away. We need to come back every two hours to readjust our equipment. When these chicks arrive after two hours, we should have 25% eating, 25% drinking, 25% resting, 25% playing. The key is what we want to do is get the birds placed on the floor and then get them into the brooding chamber as quickly as possible. So we handle them with tender loving care. So when the chicks come off the truck, just take a box, take a few chicks and take their chick tent. So the tents that we like to see are more or less 103 to 105. And so there's the vent. I just open it a little bit, put the thermometer at the skin, press until the light goes green, and then check the temp, 103.3. Another way I look at, besides looking at the beak, the eyes, look at the navel for healing, look at the vent, look at the legs. I want to make sure there's no red hawks. They're elastic and good color in nature. And then, um, yeah, just look at their general, general health. So in this barn, until they can thermoregulate to about four days, more or less, acting as cold-blooded animals, the environment becomes critical. I would, in a barn this size, do five chicks, five chicks, five chicks, five chicks, same place, down the length of the barn, and do it once or twice a day for the first three to four days. So why do, we, why do we weigh birds? Well, we weigh birds, first of all, is to give that information back to the hatchery. So here you would randomly select birds and weigh them. That information could be tabulated and get back to the hatchery. So what we're looking at is average weight, and then we can do CVs or uniformity uh, on the bell curve. We want a nice bell curve of weight. So if the average weight is 40 grams plus or minus 4 grams, we're we're nicely in that bell curve. So we'd weigh the birds at day zero, average is 40 grams. Our goal at day seven would be four times body weight, which is 160 grams. Breeds of today, we've seen anywhere from 4.5 to five times body weight, five times body weight at day seven. 
take the bird, make sure the scale is teared. In this case, the cup was four grams. Gently place the chick in the cup. It's in a closed environment. Weigh it, and this chick is 42 grams. Put in the chick. This one also, 41 grams. Seven day body weights, they have shown great correlation with end body weights. So if we can improve our seven day body weight, say by 10 grams, the multiplication is about seven or eight times. So by improving our seven day body weights by 10 grams, by paying attention to the brooding chamber, that could relate to almost 70, 80 grams at the processing date. So the metrics that we've looked at in the barns so far, besides the barn parameters and the environment is chick weight, chick temperature, and another very, very, very important tool is crop fill. And crop is that little storage chamber that the birds can store feed in before it goes through the stomach into the intestine to seek them and then out again. It's filled with feed and water. And that tells me the birds are in a comfort zone. They're finding feed and water. They're storing it in the crop because usually chickens eat every four hours more or less. So I like to evaluate crop fill. Now these chicks were just placed so it's not fair to evaluate crop fill until later on during the day or after two or three hours you're looking for about 60 percent crop fill. A day later after placement 24 hours I'd like to see about 80 or 90 to 100 percent crop fill and I always shoot for 100 percent. So crop fill can be taken in different areas of the house because in this brooding chamber there could be areas that are not as comfortable for acquiring food and water as others and crop fill will give you that indication. I'm using my stockmanship of feel and or touch, observe, etc. Now the next most important thing is the texture of the crop. When you take feed and water and mix together it's like oatmeal or porridge, it's going to be a nice but the size of my thumbnail or size of my thumb, depending on the age of the bird, it's going to have that nice, soft, pliable feeling. If I pick up the bird and I feel and it feels like shavings or feels like straw, that tells me the birds are litter eating. That means they could be sick, they haven't found their comfort zone, they're, they're huddling and they're hungry, but they're eating the litter. So crop fill is a very good indication of bird comfort, seeking and finding or acquisition of food. So what I do is I usually do it before the chicks arrive because as you see now I got all these wonderful little chicks running around me and I, I got to be conscious of where I step. But I like to do it in three or four different areas in the barn. I like to do it directly under, directly under the bulb, seven and a half foot candle. And then I like to do it between the bulbs, 6.1. For LEDs here, the brooding, the lighting, the intensity is fantastic. We can, we can tell. I want to see how curious they are. They're pecking at my wedding band, right? What's the other thing too? Their feet are, if their feet are cold, I'm going to feel it. And when I checked their body temps, they were all about 103, 104 degrees, which is wonderful off the truck. It's fantastic. It's a gift. It's a living creature. <laughs> These birds were dumped only 15 minutes ago and they're already drinking and eating, you know, searching. It's fantastic. This is a brooding chamber. This is what we want. As stockmen, we have eyes. So I want to look at their behavior. I want to see how they're dispersed, seeking and finding food. I want to hear. I want to, what am I listening? Abnormal sounds. Is there a fan that just went off and bearings are gone and it's loud in the background? Are they really noisy or there's no noise? I want to smell. Is there ammonia? Is there any disease that I can smell? And sometimes with the oak sac infection, you can almost smell it in the barn. 
and you want to feel, pick up the birds. Look for chick quality, health, vitality. Feel their feet for temperature. Stockmanship understands bird behavior and then you get into the management role of lowering the water lines or raising the water lines or changing the fan speed or putting more feed down. That's the management part, but stockmanship is critical. As a veterinarian, I am not a big fan of using antibiotics. Antibiotics could, should only be used when you have the professional support of a veterinarian. If there's malaise and health issues here, chicks need to be brought to a veterinarian. A veterinarian will perform pathology and clinical pathology to evaluate whether or not there's a recommendation for antibiotics. When we talk about mortality in chicks, usually there's a standard where our goal would be to have less than 1% at seven days. Many hatcheries strive for even better than such. I don't like to just look at what the percentage seven day mortality is. I like to look at the pattern of mortality because it gives me an idea of where I need to focus for improvement, whether it be more communication with the hatchery, but also more importantly, improvement of brooding practices on farm. We had a wonderful morning. A great thanks and appreciation to the growers for allowing us to come into the barn and the operation. We had a great crew today. Most importantly, we're here to evaluate early chick performance using some of the standard acronyms like FLAWS, food lighting, air, water, space, and sanitation. We went through all the metrics. We talked about data, decision, direction, dialogue, how important it is for the future, for the growth and the uh, potential of these birds in the first seven days. We realize after this first few hours that anything that we can do in the first seven days will extrapolate to optimal production and benefits to the back end, but more importantly for the health and comfort of the chick.